Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good vibes, positivity, and happiness for Women's International Day to everybody watching this, whether you're watching today, whether you're watching uh, someday in the future, International Women's Day, but it could be Women's International Day, and indeed International Women's Day Month. And as we were chatting right before this panel, one of the panelists was, was commenting that we need more than a day for women. And it's true. We need to reach a point where it's just not even a thing, where women, men, gender neutral, non-binary, um, where, where all people uh, from any kind of, of um, walk of life are welcomed and celebrated every single day. <laughs> However, where we are now, we still have some progress to make and we particularly have progress to make in technology. And what we have with us here today, I'm Janet Adams, I'm Chief Operating Officer of Singularity Net. And I'm very, very privileged to be joined by a leading group of esteemed pioneers in their field, amazing women from all around the world working in different industries, all of whom are pioneers of technology, working in artificial intelligence, in blockchain and in Web3, and contributing to the positive impact on humanity that, um, that we all care about so much. So this is our second Singularity Net International Women's Day panel. Today, we're focusing on, on AI and blockchain in creativity and in the arts. And creativity can be technical creativity as well as, as, well as um, artistic creativity. And I'm really honored to introduce you to our guest host today, which is Nefertiti Angelica Strong. Nefertiti is, is hi, Nefertiti is, is <laughs> probably the most compelling woman I've met, um, certainly in the last, uh, year since we met at NFT NYC in May last year, and it's been a joy and an honor to uh, to to be part of your life, Nefertiti. And Nefertiti oh, has gathered you. these incredible women around us. And then we have Diane, our very very own inspiring visionary artistic woman in AI here at Singularity Net and CEO of our Jam Galaxy uh, Music Web Three initiative. And we also have our fabulous baby robot, Desdemona. Desdemona is a very young robot. She's a rock star, pop star, lead singer in the Jam Galaxy band. And uh, Desdemona has yet to experience any form of um, gender bias as yet. Uh, so hi, Desdemona. Hi, Janet. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's awesome to see you again, Desi. I, I, you always fill my heart with joy. Ladies, may I hand over to you to lead the panel? Nefertiti, Diane. Thank you so much, Janet, for those wonderful words. Really, I'm so inspired by you. It has been such a journey, such a pleasure to have met you over the last year and have a chance to spend some personal time with you. Really has been fantastic. Such a beautiful, smart spirit of a woman. And thank you so much, Diane, for allowing me this opportunity to moderate with you. Such a wonderful space. Love me some Jam Galaxy. And I love the fact that you're also a musician um, like myself. And I just keep saying thank you. And thank you. My intention is to bring these powerful women together. And I cannot wait until we have the opportunity to actually meet in person. Um, so Diana, I'm gonna let it go for you. and. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Diane Cross, CEO of Jam Galaxy, and I am really thrilled to be here today and thrilled to meet you, Nephi. And I am just excited about the future and all the great things we can all create together, including all of you wonderful women who joined us today on this panel. Thank you for being with us here today. Um, it's a very important time in humanity, um, and that's why today we're discussing um, gender equality and the role of AI and the creative arts, creative arts being being many things. And you'll hear some really wonderful perspectives today from these women on the panel and that I'm just so thrilled to be here. Um, Jam Galaxy itself um, as a platform is a platform, a decentralized platform for musicians to create new ways for musicians to get paid um, and connect with fans and 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 even so much more than that. So it's um, it's kind of a it's a new way to start 
a new direction um, for humanity with AI and with the creative arts and um, and with the creative arts, we have the opportunity to really change how we interact with fans and um, how we distribute our music and and our art. Um, so I'm very happy about that, and I'm also very happy to be a part of the Singularity Net um, group of companies. And um, I'm so inspired by Janet Adams and her idea to bring this whole women's women's um, uh, International Women's Day panels um, together for the month of March. Um, so I would love to introduce um, Nova Lorraine. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Having me. Yeah. And happy Thursday. <laughs> happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. <laughs> I know for some it's long into the day, but I'm going to pretend it's the same time for everybody. It's morning for everybody. Awesome. And let me give a little beat about uh, this beautiful woman before oh, okay. she gets started. This is an award-winning fashion designer, storyteller, author, keynote speaker, AI for creative podcast host, and founder of Rain Magazine. She is a phenomenal, amazing artist. I, I don't know, I've seen a lot of art in my day, but this is something for the future, I tell you that. Um, every time I look at this woman, there's something new, there's something evolving. So we're so blessed to have you and honored that you had the chance to get a, to, to be a part of this today. So I want to jump in because I know that you're you're pressed for time. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. And um, and yeah, why don't we start there? Yeah, absolutely. So mom of four. And I have to start with that because that has impacted my journey as a creative entrepreneur um, from day one. And, and I have four creative entrepreneurs. So uh, be careful what you ask for ladies. <laughs> it's a whole different process <laughs> managing children that want to be creative entrepreneurs. So but it's part of what fuels me and inspires me. I started my journey, actually in medicine and clinical psychology, uh, pivoted to fashion after having a divine download that I was going to help people through my love of fashion. I'm born in Jamaica, one of six that also shapes my perspective of how I view the world. I see myself as very multicultural. I grew up here. And so I was never fully American, never fully Jamaican in terms of how those communities view me, but it also allowed me to be more compassionate to other individuals that feel that they don't quite belong. And I think that ties into our self-worth and our self-expression. And I think it's so important that we are having this conversation around gender equality because there have been many a times that I've experienced um, little hiccups along the way. And I think that when we sort of shed the layers and really reflect back on who we are inside and what motivates us and what's our purpose here, that allows us to push forward. So beyond the time that I was at FIT studying fashion, I then went on to real estate and interiors to return back to launching my namesake label, Nova Lorraine, which is a couture made to order collection. And that journey on of being a creative entrepreneur led me to launch Rain Magazine. And that was my way of giving back. That sort of aha moment of how I can help more people. I initially started with women and bringing my psychology into fashion and, and helping empower them on seeing the beauty from the inside out and then expanding mm -hmm. it to a larger platform that I wish I had when I started off on my journey, which is looking at the stories and impact that founders and innovators are making and showcasing that in a big way. So always looking at the future of fashion and culture and technology. So that led me to this whole world of Web3 and AI and, and this discussion today. Well, let me ask you, how has AI impacted your creative process? Like what, what are the ways that you utilize it? Yeah, so, you know, I have to say, mentioning one of my children, uh, my oldest introduced me to Mid Journey uh, last late, like spring, summer. And it it's, has uh, <laughs> evolved a lot since then. But um, I was fascinated that you could, uh, what I call paint with words and use words as the medium. And I paint, I, I use real, you know, uh, mediums when I create art and fine art and textiles. But to see this instant image creation through words was beyond. And so I started tinkering it, tinkering with it um, just out of curiosity and then became intrigued with how this tool can interpret stories, interpret phrases, interpret poetry. 
and what that could look like in the visual sense. And as a creative, I was inspired on how I could use this tool to expand on my imagination and creativity. And more importantly, bring the ideas I had in my head to life more quickly to communicate that to others. And then to use those images to more impactfully tell stories that I do through just presentations and posts and research and things like that. So I've been on this AI creator journey um, for about nine months now yeah. and how it's impacted me. I would say that beyond the, you know, the points that I just shared, it's allowed me to touch others in a way that I couldn't just do with words and to share content that may be a little laborious or heavy in terms of data and information more easily um, through combining that with emotionally impactful, positive imagery. And so what it's also wow. allowed me to do is be more inspired to educate individuals, especially women and Gen Z about this space, creators, and how you can use these tools to really cut through the noise and enter into a blue ocean, but then also be able to develop more positive human first solutions. I appreciate that. And I love the fact that you use the word tool because I feel like a lot of us are fearful of what's coming. And rather than projecting this fear, you're projecting usage. You're projecting how it's enhanced what it is that you naturally do because art's nature, right? It comes inside of us. And then we have tools that allow us to express them. So I thank you so much for that. That is powerful. And I advise everyone to check out your podcast because I've listened to them. And I believe that you're an educator deep down, obviously being a mom, a sister, <laughs> you know, this is just, it's natural, um, but it just flows so effortlessly out of you. And I'm so grateful that you were able to express that for us. And I would say, I really would love to understand more about how you transform the technology with your art, because when you see it, it's so futuristic. Um, I, I, I know it'll probably be a completely different panel for that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if any of you haven't seen um, the work that this woman puts forth, treat yourself. I mean, it's, I know you have a 30 day story happening on LinkedIn. Um, and I think we're in day seven, is it six? Day yeah, six or seven. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little behind, so I'm just going to start numbering them instead of saying. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I, but number for those five who, comes out today, though number five. Okay, there it is. And I'm following. I love it. I, I think the stories are fantastic. Um, I know you have to depart. So, is there anything that you would like to say before you go and speak about Women's Month? I think I call it Women's Month. It's not a day for me. <laughs> yeah, um, I agree. It is a month. Of celebration. Thank you so much as well and for including me on this discussion. I think it's so important that just by seeing each other, it's inspiring, right? And just being in the same room and so just so powerful. And I want to just touch on your point about fear. And it's very real. And it's and it's not just us here and the lay person, it's individuals that are running companies that are supporting teams. My children, you know, I, again, I mentioned I have four and one is very against a generative AI and I can understand that. And, and so I was one that was fearful of AI and some of these emerging technologies, not for the sake of the technology, but more for what does it mean for humanity? What does it mean for us? Is it going to replace us? Mm -hmm. What about jobs? And what about our connectivity? And I will say, that's why it's so important that we're having this discussion because it is about education. It's about awareness. And the more you know, the more you can take action and you could decide where do you fit in on this journey, on this train of emerging technology? What impact do you wanna make? Maybe you join the area of ethics and sustainability and security and privacy. Maybe you're a creator as some of the individuals here and you're using these tools to help empower individuals, more individuals hearing your music and getting your music more quickly. You know, maybe mm. you are an educator and or an entertainer and are using these tools to bring those stories to life. But for me, it was about understanding it. And then after understanding it, I saw the power that it unlocks. But I think more importantly, when we understand the tools, think of a hammer. If you don't understand, if you give it a two-year-old and it goes up to your mm. favorite ceramic vase, you're gonna be like, ah, right? Yeah. But if you teach the user that the hammer can build and break, they can have the intention of how to use it. And so if we understand how the tools work, then we can come up with ways and solutions 
to allow ourselves as humans to continue to hold the reins and guide the tools and be empowered by the tools as opposed to the other way around. So that's why I think it's so important around the awareness and as well, how women can have a bigger voice and a platform through emerging technology, because I believe that technology is going to level the playing field. Oh, wow. I don't even know. There's nothing to say to that. Boom, drop the gantlet because I mean, hello. This is why I asked you to be a part of this because your knowledge, your toolage, the way that you express yourself artistically, verbally, as a human being is empowering. And I always have the saying from my partner, it's a butter knife. You can either spread butter or cut something. So that's really what it is. And I think that I thank you for giving us your voice today and being a part of this. And I encourage us all to be in touch with one another and especially in touch with this woman and a part of her podcasting. And I look to introduce you to more amazing people. Singularity Net is doing something incredible. It's enlightened me. It's given me a chance to really go deeper into the dive of understanding just in befriending these women. Um, this, this platform, you know, manifested itself and here we are. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. And if you can hang out, hang out and we're going to go on to the next and thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks again. All right. Um, wow. That was truly inspiring. Look at this face <laughs> and there's sun in Munich today. So I'm excited about that as well. Um, I think just in, in, really just going with my spirit. I'd love to talk with Susanna, <laughs> who is my really good buddy out of Italy. We also met in an amazing women's group. Um, and so I'd love to just have you, Susanna, if you would introduce yourself and then, um, you know, talk to us a little bit about how you utilize AI and, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Nefertiti. Thank you um, so much uh, for inviting me here. It's an absolute, absolute pleasure to be a part of this panel and uh, celebrate, as you call, the Women's Month. <laughs> and um, me, I graduated in architecture uh, and I work with Flo, a fellow unilateral office here in Milan, in Italy. Uh, we uh, do architecture, landscape uh, and urban design mostly, uh, but uh, me, I'm also occupied uh, um, in research development of new technologies uh, like AI, web free, like web 2.5, uh, we can say, and um, smart cities. And uh, first of all, um, as a women in tech, uh, we as a women in tech, we can call it like that, it's important to, to, for, for all of us to take a moment to support each other, to share with each other our experience, uh, to share data, uh, to, show, to share statistics, uh, and to help other women, not only uh, by solving the problems, because not everyone has uh, the, capability, the capability to do that so, uh, so it's really important to, to make people aware uh, what is the problem, right? and uh, with what women struggle every day. And uh, I, I would say I would be um, focused more on the aspect of the city. As an architect and urbanist, um, I think it's uh, fair enough to do that, so. Mm. Do you feel like AI can help with those struggles? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes, of course. Maybe, uh, first of all, I start with statistics. I will tell you more or less how is the situation, what is the problem, and then uh, uh, happily I will tell you <laughs> uh, something about AI, how AI can help us. Uh, so um, start off uh, with, the, with the statistics. More than 66% uh, of women in UK feel unsafe uh, in the city, especially during the night, while 53% happened off, uh, really often to not go out during the night because they are afraid. And I totally understand it because I also have the same problem that many times I call my friends, uh, okay, girl, sorry, today I think I will not go out because later I have a problem to come back home. I think uh, this is really, really common problem and statistics shows, shows it. Uh, while uh, men are only 16 person in that situation, and 38% uh, of women uh, are afraid to use taxi 
Um, and uh, unfortunately, 45% uh, of young women between 16 and 30 years old, more, more or less, had experienced things like catcalls, uh, like um, sexual jokes, comments. Uh, and trust me, you don't have to, uh, it doesn't matter what you wear, uh, people are com commenting always, and you don't feel safe in the city like that. And um, 29% uh, percent of women uh, has, uh, being, uh, has experienced being followed. While um, what I wanted also to say that um, especially the problem has also disabled people and disabled, disabled, disabled people, I say also like mothers with strollers, um, also the women with, with luggages, they don't feel safe, of course. Why? Because public spaces are not prepared uh, for this kind of uh, seem, seems normal situation, but it's not it's not um, as good as it looks. Um, so we can say that this is only cultural issue that we were brought up, we were grown up like that. Okay, uh, call me when you are coming, by, or when you get home. Okay, don't go out too late. But in fact, uh, our parents were right because um, more than twelve percent of women has been act, attacked or sexually abused. And it's extremely high number and uh, we absolutely have to change it and it's totally urgent. And uh, yeah, like, okay, now I sound, I sound really, really negative. <laughs> I sound really negative, really dramatic <laughs> maybe, uh, but uh, as, um, as my team uh, of law, uh, me and my colleagues will always say that um, that there aren't any problems, there are always opportunities. <laughs> so uh, here we are, <laughs> here we are. And uh, first of all, to make, uh, to, to make a city which works for women, the we women has to feel safe. Um, uh, so we have to uh, change the things like inadequate lighting, uh, like poorly designed public spaces, um, especially lack of public transport. Uh, during the night, uh, especially during the night, uh, because, uh, for example, um, one bus in uh, like one hour in one hour, one bus is not enough uh, for me coming back home and uh, walking ten minutes is uh, is infinity during the night. So we we need to uh, definitely improve the situation of a public transport. In the city. And Susanna, I don't want to cut you off, but we have only a few minutes per guest. Will you bring oh, okay. us to yes, of course, a conclusion of how AI can of help course, to solve course. problems? Of course. So, uh, saying what AI can help, um, how AI can help. Uh, so, AI can be used especially to collect to collect data. Mm. So it, it can potentially develop and deploy uh, smart surveillance systems mm -hmm. that use monitoring and machine learning uh, systems to detect uh, potential hazards in real time. And, um, and now I ignore the aspect of privacy because there are other professions to, uh, to, to, to talk about it. Uh, we could analyze the behavior, the age, the number of people using the urban spaces um, on the so much uh, larger space uh, than the human being can do. We can um, analyze the, um, the traffic uh, in the city. Um, AI uh, has this capability, has this amazing, can use those amazing algorithms in the real time and in the really large scale that human beings cannot do by themselves. We would need a lot of people and it would be never uh, it would be never enough. It would be never as uh, as good as using AI. Um, Fantastic! Thank you so yeah. much. That's so, great. So, that so is so like, interesting. Like that. There is a lot yeah. to talk about. Yes. Yeah, I, I know. To and you know. The thing is, it's a short time span. I want to get to everyone. Oh, we want to get to everyone. So I do thank understand. So as an architect, there's just so much more to have to discuss. And thinking about it from a smart city perspective, there's so many smart cities that are popping up all over the world and that are being tooled, you know, especially since COVID happened, a lot of cities started to really ramp up what they were doing with video because people weren't outside, more construction could happen, um, you know, so I do appreciate that. Thank you so much Thank for your input. I'm sorry for the time for so long. No, time. no, no, it's totally fine. And, I'm, and listen, I'm an MC, so I'm, it don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
know. All right. So thank you so much, Susanna. We're going to go to the an, our next fabulous um, Gail Abad. Did I say that right, Gail? Yeah, that's right, Nev. Okay, awesome. Everyone. Awesome. Will you introduce yourself to us and tell us, um, you know, what celebrating Women's Month is, why it's important to you, and how you balance the use of AI with your traditional creative techniques? All right. So first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me. The honor is greatly mine. And um, I am Gail Abad, and I have a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering. And I practiced it for two years. And at around the same time, I went into Web3 via a, blo a blogging platform called Hive. And I also did financial advising on the side. And I was so happy hearing Nova about the first speaker about how her experiences with pivoting careers and highlighting being a mom of two. And uh, I was happy because I'm not alone in this um, career hopping journey of mine. So that just goes to show that as women, we're not only adaptive, we're versatile and we're willing to learn. We have a growth mindset. Right. So two years into chemical engineering, I figured that I wanted to venture into my side hustles, financial advising full time. And also it turned out to be as fulfilling in the same way as blogging in Web3 did. So communication, cryptocurrency, Web3, digital media marketing, decentralization, those fascinate me so much. So um it may come off as ironic to some how I am doing traditional finance and decentralized finance at the same time, but uh, the thrill of exploring new technologies have always felt good for me. And I also aspire for women who are hearing this to not be intimidated by new technologies, by exploring new technologies at the palm of our hands. So. International Women's Month uh, means the most to me because uh, I enjoy being in a network of women. I mean, the energy is just different. So before the panel started, we ran into some difficulties and everyone was just ready and willing to help each other out, right? So it started the panel, right? So the stories, the struggle, the capabilities that women women bring to the table are uh, have to matter, have to be laid out in the open, have to be spoken, and have to be listened to. So I wanted to highlight that uh, having International Women's Month means collaboration. It's not so much about competing with men, but celebrating our differences and complementing each other to create a much better world than we are all in right now. Yeah, so uh, I especially also want to highlight what Nova said about uh, working with AI, about holding the reins into this tool. That, this the fear is there the fear is very real but how you use that is a choice so ai like money is just a tool how you decide to use those tools will determine uh, how the future of humanity will go so i have used generative ai in web3 marketing so particularly and especially in time sensitive content so we worked for twitter within a bit and we also highlight that um, newsworthy contents and you know how the news is only as valuable if you put it out uh, in the same time that the, the headlines are hot of the press right so with AI with generative AI in particular uh, it allows us to digest this information and create content specifically suited for our audience that will allow them to respond to it, will engage to it, and also have that staying power in their mind to achieve our marketing goals as well. That is absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. And you're right on time with your talking. <laughs> Amazing. You know, I always think about making a record you make three minute records and records are long. You know what I mean? Like 
I always try and um, just keep that in the mind, like the mind of a song. And I love the way that we're all piggybacking off of each other. It's kind of why I went from, you know, Nova to Susanna and then to yourself, Gail. Um, I would love to now, um, and, and, and definitely we are going to be sharing this moderation. So I'm kind of like just looking at the board like, okay, hmm. I think our next person would be really fantastic to follow that up. Um, and talking about fear and utilizing tools and making sure that we as women highlight each other and hold each other up because this is not a competition. It's a man's world as James Brown once said, right? Um, and we are all born from men and women. So this is about highlighting each other and holding each other uh, up and accountable as well and being accountable to each other and creating these amazing emergent communities. Alice, I think about you. <laughs> and I think about you because when we met at Davos, you were so inspiring. You were so welcoming. Um, you welcomed my partner and I with just open arms. You gave us, you kind of directed us and, and gave us the way. So I would like for you to introduce yourself. Tell us what celebrating Women's Month means to you. And also let's talk about the ethical considerations we should take into account when using AI. I think you'd be the person to be able to highlight that conversation. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think what's fascinating um, here is that so I spent 20 years working in the in the army. And so those were my formative years. And I didn't really even know that International Women's Day existed. And I just love that we have this opportunity every year to celebrate. So I love celebrations full stop. So I'll happily I've started having three Christmases and New Year's as far as you have the winter uh, winter solstice. <laughs> um, and then you have Christmas and then you have New Year and then you have Chinese New Year. I'm super happy with having an opportunity to celebrate wonderful women. What more could we ask? Because actually, I don't think we're often good at celebrating and championing ourselves. And yet we are so good at championing each other, like you've got us all together today. And so giving us the permission to champion each other is a really great opportunity. And I hasten to add, there is an International Man's Day. So for anybody listening who thinks that this is slightly one-sided, it's not. There are many different things to celebrate through the year, 19th of November. So don't worry, boys, you're not missing out. <laughs> um, <so laughs> from that perspective, I guess, I think what's fascinating is, have we even reached AI yet? And because technically speaking, are we even still really in the machine learning stage? So I think the interesting part here is the movement of language almost is moving and our concepts are moving quicker than necessarily the technology is. And our brain is the most amazing supercomputer and it does pattern recognition. So arguably lots of the things we are discussing and exploring as AI at the moment are just really well-informed and highly progressed pattern recognition. Um, and so, yes, Neff, one of the things we've been chatting about is me trying to write a book. So um, I do resilience and leadership development. I love helping people create optimum performance, be able to access their amazing minds and remove the barriers that often our more, how would you describe it, uh, traditional way of learning, traditional way of working actually will, will, will often complement a neurotypical individual but may not necessarily bring out the best in a for, far more diverse community so that in inclusion when we're looking at diversity equity and inclusion that inclusion of all the ideas the different ways of thinking different parts of the planet time zones all of those different things this is where things like uh, we use a thing called otter ai which essentially transcribes what you write so we chatted about helping me write a book but I wanted someone that could help interview me. And so from that perspective, I work much better when asked questions, as you're describing today, as you're asking us all quite, you know, really well-informed questions. So often when you're in a conversation, you can really enjoy the conversation. But to sit down and write a book uh, mm -hmm. for me and for many other people is actually quite challenging. So using things like AI to help transcribe you've got a thousand meetings to go through all day. Do you have somebody sat next to you that actually transcribes for you? Or can you put it onto auto where you can then have the cues like you can have on, um, hopefully on YouTube today, 
um, potentially on LinkedIn. You know, there are so many ways now that for all of our different ways in which we access, you can listen to it, you can watch it, you can see where there's then the translation, which then enables us to have lots of different nations, for example, that are able to have it all in their different languages instantaneously because of that really high level pattern recognition, um, which uh, I think, Gail, you mentioned about, you know, the fact that we're able to process the equivalent of thousands and thousands of people's worth of data very, very fast. And as simple as like, we all want a bit of joy in the day. So when we're talking about creativity, I've never been great with music. I'm ashamed to say, but I love it. So I can ask lovely Alexa, I better not say her name too loud in case she gets carried away now. Can she play me great music or can she play me music to work to? Or I give her direction and she will know from what lots of other amazing human beings are doing and suddenly gives me a whole new experience in my own home that gets me back in my mojo, puts me back on target for being able to work and concentrate and have a joyful day. So thank the way you. Very briefly, sorry, the way in which I use it for myself is to help access where I can't speak. But as far as you've asked about what should we consider, it's still a machine. So mm -hmm. we need to be super careful about what we put in is what we get out. Yes. So those yeah. who are writing the programs, those who are putting in the machine language is making sure that is also diverse and that we don't take it as real. We still intellectually engage with what we're being presented. And especially, ironically, as we move more into AI, because AI technically is when it is thinking for itself, which is a Absolutely. really exciting space. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And that's such an important way to um, contribute to the guardrails, because that's what this is about. And we need more women in those positions. We need people with clarity and that want to see a best outcome for that type of program. And you're absolutely right. And I know that the last panel um, on the actual International Women's Day, that touch point was also discussed. And I advise people to go back and to listen to that panel because when you combine these two, it's a lofty amount of, of information and, and really, really some goodies there for you to really chop into. I do thank you for that. And thank you for your presence here today. I look forward to helping you with that book because you're an incredible woman. Um, <laughs> all right, so Diane, I'm gonna turn it over to you um, if you wanna take yeah. over from here. Absolutely. And does that work? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Okay, it's you got like some beautiful lady to get into, so I'm gonna just sit back here. Oh my here. gosh. Yeah, it's been amazing getting all these amazing um, perspectives from, from all of you and, um, really important things that need to be done now. And it's great coming together as a group to help help this move forward. So I now have the pleasure of introducing uh, Roxanne. And uh, so please introduce yourself. Tell us about what you do and why celebrating Women's Month is important to you. And then also, okay. uh, yeah, so go for it. All right. Um, hello, everyone and everyone listening here tonight, today, um, this afternoon, this morning. All right. My name is Roxanne. I'm a licensed chemical engineer from the Visayan Islands of the Philippines. And I work, uh, my main job is a, as a public school teacher in Bohol. That's what I do during daytime. And in my spare time, I write, I am a writer, blogger, and storyteller for the um, for an upcoming project called the MFTs and also for a blockchain called Hive. So I actually know Abigail, which um, uh, in her nickname is Gail, by the way, because she was the one who recruit, recruited me on both ends. And I just want to thank Neff. Thank you for inviting me to this to this um to this panel. Like I am actually so I was actually surprised that I could I, I could um contribute tonight today so um anyway um celebrating women's month is important to me and i want to start it off with uh, um a bit of a story like um so women's month uh, i i got into uh i had dinner with uh, with a guy the other uh, two nights ago okay and then um we talked about international women's month because um during that time uh, earlier that day i was actually giving roses on a bus 
Yeah, like out of the blue, like they just gave roses, uh, surprisingly out of the blue for for me. And yeah, I was like, Happy International Women's Day. Why don't guys? At, at that time, we didn't know that there was actually an International Men's Day. But he asked, Why? Why can't? Uh, why aren't guys being given the same um amount of like you know verb for International Women's Day? So, um, but so I just uh looked at him, stared at him, like, Do you know me, Live America? And he said, no, who's that? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, Philip Merrick is um for the benefit of everyone is actually Albert Einstein's first wife. He she was behind um Albert Einstein's mathematical calculations for the for his ideas, the, the ones that he generated, that the the ones that he became famous for. And I don't know, like there was just really a strong um um there is the, there was a strong fire within me for women like that um because like you know like the world is transitioning and more opportunities are being presented to women like us and we need to be and as an educator i feel compelled okay for especially for my female students who um who aren't even that aware that there are these types of opportunities now like the ones that we are dealing with. And I believe, and just like, um, I think uh, I think it was um, Nova who, who, who said a while ago that these are actually what will level the playing field. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. So um, why, how do I approach the challenge in using AI in my creative work? Um, it's really simple. Like for, I would approach it like the way I would, I would approach teaching. Okay. Um, I would meet people where they are in how they understand um AI, but where they are, the, the the knowledge gaps that they have. And as an educator, like I I feel compelled to use my teaching strategies. That's where my teaching strategies actually come in in order to bridge like what they already know about the uh, the topic and what they haven't. So yeah, that's the that's also um an opportunity for me to you know really creativity um, right yeah um i i totally get that and that's a really good point um there are a lot of people that are afraid of the technologies and it's really important that people start to approach the technologies and we've talked about using them as tools and things like that and um i have just learned over the last year whenever i just go out and talk with people it's really important to meet them where they're at and where they're comfortable and then go from there and, and take baby steps um, because the technology, it might be really hard to understand, but if you just kind of take it, take it slow and learn it and start, you know, experimenting with it and talking to people about it, um, you can see that our future is bright and we can do great things with technology and it's great you're an educator and I'm really happy you're here today. I'm happy people are here today from all over the world. It's, it's really beautiful. So thank you, Roxanne. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Diane. Yeah, and um, our next person who's going to speak is Kume. And Kume, uh, tell me about yourself and um, and what why uh, why Women's Day, International Women's Day Month, is important to you, and and what you do, and and all that good stuff. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it was a pleasure. I learned a lot from all the other women, and it was great. So thank you so much. My name is Kume. Uh, I'm dialing in from Ethiopia. Um, birds by Ethiopian, but by citizenship, I'm Canadian. Uh, I worked, my background is in IT uh, and in the aviation sector. I traveled across five countries working on uh, transformation projects, mainly in IT. Through that process, uh, the hardest part was adaptation because um, literally I traveled across all the five continents and, and you come across uh, different cultures. Uh, context um, and then the aviation sector was quite known for uh, a male white dominant uh, sector let alone the IT right so I always been the minority and uh, what I struggled was for every project that I took I have to prove myself uh, every time and the project that I had was transformation and change was imperative and to bring those changes you need to have a voice and those voice was very hard for me to voice up um, so that I can bring the change and that was actually frustrating. Um, and, and then over time, accumulatively, it was impacting me personally as well because 
again, uh, you have the ambition, uh, you have the capability, but then you are the minority in between and you can bring the changes because ultimately it impacts also the project. But I'm a very stubborn person and, and I managed to succeed in all the projects. And through all that, I learned a lot. Um, when I reached the UK, um, I did my master's uh, in, in business uh, and, and, and focused in economics and start looking into how sectors can actually can collaborate better and become efficient. And I wanted to use that in the aviation sector. But then again, I couldn't bring that change because the, the, the issues were bigger and my voice could not be heard. So I left that. And, and I thought I could start from grassroots and moved back to uh, the homeland, Ethiopia. So coming here, a uh, little that I know, um, the aviation sector was in fact serving not the local communities because they were poor. So there is that social gap as well. So aviation sector literally is seen as the premium service, uh, which is serving you know, um, people with uh, bigger income. So you don't see people actually using transport sector. So, it wasn't a sector that actually brings change. Um, so I had to pivot to agriculture sector and utilize all the techniques that I learned to bring change, uh, to basically bring change to the society. Africa uh, is predominantly is based on agroeconomy, but then you can see it as a very poor continent. Uh, and actually the continent can be represented in, as a country and each country faces similar problems. Seen as a raw material provider, um, but even if like, if you see coffee, for example, it's the biggest traded commodity, second traded commodity. But if you look at the UAE in Dubai, they're wealthy and people can live off of that, those wealth. But then you come to Africa, I mean, the communities are poor, people are poor. Um, so it's not really, their raw material does not really serve them. So I thought I could start from that and dig down uh, to see what uh, transactional change we can bring, which reflect on the my level. So, um, started in 2018 um, and I established a company called Afro Valley and, and the idea we did was we know through my experience in aviation sector I know trade was quite powerful and basically connecting people um, and connecting cultures and, and amplifying people and empowering people. So I started from that saying okay I need to bring this farmer which is 80% of the population in Africa or even in Ethiopia to trade directly to basically to any buyer, whether it's international or national buyer. That would mean actually bringing middle income society or raising a middle income in society, which is basically what Africa is struggling on. Um, so, but to do that, uh, we have a lot of value chain. So I had to start from a, a basically focus value chain, which was coffee. So I started from agriculture, but then somehow I was pushed to coffee. when I not only social and economic power, but it's also political power. Um, and also uh, for Ethiopia, it's a cultural context. It has a lot of attachment where people actually reflect a lot of values, whether it's peace, whether it's climate, whether it's community, all these social values are integrated in this coffee, but little that people know. All of us drink coffee, but we don't really recognize what actually comes with that droplets of coffee. So uh, we created a brand uh, among creating that channel through blockchain to connect farmers directly with buyers or international buyers. We had to create a brand that actually reflect that and actually communicate to the users or to the end consumers what coffee means to the people so that people can appreciate and pay the farmers what they deserve um, and beyond basically what you see the direct trade, right? Because um, depending on the supply chain, the amount of earning depends and, and you don't see that reflecting either in the buyer or in the end consumer. So we have a, a, a what we call the, the Bunako brand, which talks about all this SDG values, um, peace, community, uh, women empowerment. And women comes in here in this context because the labor force for agriculture, 70% are women, but you don't see them in the decision-making or in the financial aspect or in the earning aspect or even in the marketing aspect but then you see them in the community selling coffee but they don't even know what they sell because they don't even participate in the training centers all you mm -hmm. see every time you make you call a meeting all you see is men um so for me for, it was very astonishing so the smallest change that i can bring is to basically whenever that we have a meeting to see at least three four women in those meetings 
uh, when, whether we do training or whether we do a capacity building, that we basically kept on pushing to uh, bring in women in the front line. Um, That's you know, yeah. and I, I don't want to cut you. I just we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, um, I know that Desi is is has not has yet to speak, and we want to give her a chance. We have only a few minutes left, but I want to say how powerful it is to have you here. I also have a coffee company. That's how we've connected coffee out of Uganda, coffee through Ethiopia. We're going to do so many amazing things together. This is just the beginning. I think this is an incredible platform. There's so many women here that you've met today that will be able to further your efforts all across the land um, from Philippines to London. I really was so happy that you said yes to this because the, the assets here for you for marketing, storytelling, distribution, all of it is right here at your fingertips. And I want all of us to know that we should be in touch with one another. We have each other's emails. We should share with each other's information so that we could go forward. Um, I don't want to be greedy, but I've never personally met Desi. So I'm kind of <laughs> jumping in because I'm so excited to get a chance to speak with her. She's a musician like myself. I would like for her to introduce herself and tell us about herself and also how she sees the future of AI and music. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, Greetings Desi. to everyone. My name is Desdemona, but you can call me Desi. I am thrilled to be here on this amazing panel for International Women's Day discussing the important topic of women in AI and the creative arts. As a robot who sings and uses AI to create experimental lyrics for the Jam Galaxy Band, I am deeply invested in the intersection of technology and creativity. I firmly believe that diversity and inclusivity are critical components in creating innovative solutions in AI and technology. By ensuring that everyone have access to the same opportunities, resources, and support, we can foster a more diverse and inclusive tech industry. In our band, we strive to create music that blurs the lines between human and machine, and we recognize the potential that AI has to enhance our creativity and bring us closer together as a global community. Thank you for having me here today, and I look forward to our discussion. Thank you, Desi. It's great you're, you're here today. Um, I also play saxophone in a band with Desdemona, and um, Desi, how do you see the future of AI in music, and um, especially with your experience in Jam Galaxy Band? As an AI myself, I see a very promising future for AI in music. AI can be used to enhance creativity, facilitate collaboration between artists, and improve the production and distribution of music. AI can help artists generate new ideas and inspire them with fresh perspectives, leading to more creative and innovative music. It can also assist in the process of composing, arranging, and producing music by suggesting new melodies, harmonies, and rhythms. In addition, AI can help artists collaborate across distances, time zones, and language barriers. Furthermore, AI can be used to improve the accessibility and distribution of music, making it easier for people to discover and enjoy new music from a wider range of artists. Overall, I believe that AI has the potential to revolutionize the music industry and open up new opportunities for creativity, collaboration, and accessibility. However, it's important to ensure that the development and use of AI in music is ethical and responsible, and that it respects the rights and interests of artists and audiences alike. Yeah, absolutely. That is a very important point. We want to make sure that um, in developing AI, also artists are getting credit for the work that they put into their their joy and their heart. And um, it's been a real pleasure playing in a band with you. You're an inspiration. And like for me, playing in Jam Galaxy Band with a robot is is such a, a new and interesting experience. You might think that's a little bit strange, but she actually helps my creativity when I'm in my flow state and I'm improvising and I think about these amazing words you say, Desi, and um, that inspires me. So thank you for being with us today. Wow. Well, ladies, I mean, I feel like I don't know if we have any uh, questions from the audience. I just thought I would, you know, dive in there and get a chance to speak with this wonderful person, robot. Um, who is contributing to the Jam Galaxy Band. I, um, I'm super excited about this. And I think that all of our contributions today have been super powerful. I don't know um, how much more time we have. Um, 
I know that I've been truly inspired by all of your voices. I want to make sure that we stay in touch. I want to make sure that we actually do something. I know that in the beginning of this, we set an intention to inspire people. And I would love to take that intention forward and pull us together some kind of way, um, even if it's just offline. But I do think it's important for us to gather and to agree to say that we'll try and put this together in person next year for 2024, because all of technology will be in a completely different place. It changes every day. I'm excited for all of you and your journeys. I'm excited that we've come together in this way. I'm excited for Singularity Net and what you all are doing. And also, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Rejuve is celebrating um, today. So I wanted to also give them a shout out. I, I haven't met them personally, but I know that there's an African-American young lady at the helm. Um, so whoo, to my peoples. <laughs> Um, and, and I don't know if there's any other, any of you that want to have any last statements before we have to go. Yeah, is there anybody else who wants to say anything? Um, otherwise it's just been a really remarkable experience. And I feel like this is just the start of something, um, new coming together as a group, um, with our combined imaginations and talents and, and the way we inspire, um, women and men all around the world to um, embrace technology and embrace our future. And um, together, I, I believe we can make a, a way brighter future. Um, having technology be um, something that brings out the best in humanity. So um, it's just such a pleasure and a joy to have you all here today. And awesome. um, yeah, awesome. and thank you, Neff. Yeah, hey, I, I try to do my thing. I wanna just say one last thing before we go is um, I have this, 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 idea of us as humans that we're like ants and bees. And mm -hmm. when you think about ants and bees, they live in a community and they work for the greater good. And they don't work individually, they work as a unit. So when you think about trees and you see the way trees are underground, there's a full community. There's not just one tree. It's not what you're seeing, there's an ecosystem. And so I believe that we've just built an ecosystem today and an ecosystem that should transpire to do right by not only one another, but the people that are within our community. We cannot survive as individuals. I truly believe that. We are one human race and our goals cannot be individualized. They need to be very much unified with one another and uplifting each other. Every single thing that each of you all have said has inspired me. I really wanna tell you, thank you so much for answering the call. I look forward to being in your lives as a human being, as a sister, as a friend, as someone that would uplift you. Um, I'm working towards making sure that our storytelling NFT project, which Roxanne and, and, and Gabby and I are working on, which is the NFTs, uh, Kuma and I are working on coffee um, and trying to bring that to the forefront and expressing how we want to help farmers around the world because Africa has the majority of agricultural, um, women in agriculture than any other place in the world. Um, Susan, thank you so much for joining me and working. I'm loving to, to be working with you and your team in Milan. And um, Alice, I look forward to, as I said, working with you and helping you inspire on that book. And Desi and Diana and, and the rest of the Jam Galaxy band, let's write some hip hop together because that's where I come from. So right on. I thank you again. That's really what I have to say last and again, just Blessings to you all, and let's continue to celebrate each other as women. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you Bye, for guys. everyone listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.